Hey everyone, Olympus Visionary Jamie McDonald here with another quick screencast covering yet another piece of Nick software. Uh, this is HDR FX Pro 2. And we're going to be working on an image in a different way. Today, instead of your typical HDR, this is full of vibrant color and crazy tonality. We're going to do something in black and white. I know that a lot of you are familiar with color HDR and I'm sure some of you are familiar with black and white HDR and for those of you who haven't seen black and white HDR I guess this will be an introduction for you. The picture we're going to work on is of an abandoned farmhouse here in mid-Michigan. I've been driving past this farmhouse twice a day for the last decade and had never stopped to shoot it until one day I couldn't take it anymore and I decided I need to see what's inside of there. So I pulled my car over to the side of the road and hiked back up to check out this house. And it's a really interesting house on the outside. It's brick and full of scroll work. And upon looking inside of it, I discovered that it wasn't going to be a building that I was going to go inside of to explore. The floor is pretty rotted out. Um, you can see here that the floorboards are buckling and there are big holes in the floor. So instead of going in and getting some crazy cool shots, I kind of just got a couple of shots from the windows outside. Uh, this photo was taken with the Olympus OMD EM5 and I had their micro 4 thirds 9 to 18 millimeter ultra wide on it so that I could get as much of the room as possible in this shot. And instead of doing your typical bracketed photos for HDR, this is just going to be a single raw file processed. And I know that the HDR purists out there are going to scoff at the idea of a single exposure being used for something like this, but I think you'll be pretty impressed with how much dynamic range the Olympus OMD files contain. You can see here in this doorway, it's extremely blown out. There is literally no detail right through here, nothing. You can't see anything. And that was how it was coming out of the camera. Once we pull it into HDR FX Pro 2 and we start pulling detail from the nooks and crannies of this photo, I, you're going to see that there's actually plenty of detail that's preserved in this one raw file. So let's export this out into HDR FX Pro 2. And it's going to launch in HDR FX Pro 2 as a standalone application outside of Lightroom. We'll work on it in there, and then when we save the file out, it'll be re-pulled back into Lightroom for further work. Alright, and here we are. Let me go back to single view. Now like with all of the other Nick software, it comes with a library full of presets that you can use. I generally We'll start off with one of their presets and then I will kind of work my way through tweaking individual aspects of it to get what I want. Although you can get some pretty cool results right out of the gate with some of their presets. I suppose it's one of those things where you can play around with the different canned presets and you might come across one that works perfectly for what you want to do. But I'm a tinkerer and I kind of consider these the starting point for whatever I'm going to do. I've got it set to the architecture library. It just happens to be defaulted to that one right now. I think maybe the last time I used it, that's what it was on. So we'll just start there. And I know right now, just looking at this thumbnail preview, this is kind of where I want to start with this photo anyways. And you can see we've drawn out a lot of detail out of the door where the paint's faded away. And lo and behold, over here where we can see nothing but a white mess, we've actually got the individual panels on the door outside are now visible. So... I told you the OMD had a lot of detail stored away in those files. Um, I know that purists again hate when they see people turn the saturation slider all the way down to go to black and white, but it works. So that's what I'm going to do here. It's still bright. It's not the feeling that I want from this image. I mean, it's kind of creepy. So let's bring the creepy level up a little bit by dropping the exposure down some. And again, it's going to be one of those things where you'll just tweak the sliders until you get about where you think you want to be. And you can key in the numbers too. And I'm thinking that I made a mistake by not hitting a negative in there. Um, 
I'm thinking that's really good there. So it looks flat. You know, we've I've got the the brightness down to where I want it to be, but we need some contrast in here to give us some separation. So we'll crank the contrast up. We're starting to look good. It's starting to get a little bit of a grungy look to it. You can see here. Um, if you boost the structure slider up, you'll get crazy grungy look. I'm not going to use it at this level, but just to show you what it does. So at 77, it's getting to be a little bit over the top, and it looks like it might be part of a, uh, I don't know, like a box for a, a horror genre video game or something. I don't want it quite at that level, but I'm thinking maybe like around 45 or 50 is going to be good for what I'm going for. I think that looks good. And again, just to show it off, the amount of detail preserved in that one file, it just shows you that I mean, we probably could have gotten a little bit more if we'd bracketed five or seven shots or nine shots, but I don't even think that that was a necessary thing to do in this case. Um, I think I want to finish off with a little bit of vignette. Just uh, draw our focus on this doorway over here, so we'll kind of darken the edges up a little bit here. Ooh, don't you like a notification right in the middle of recording a screencast all right so here we are I this is the finished product that I'm gonna work with I like this this is exactly what I wanted and you see I only really tooled around with a couple of the sliders over here there is a lot more you can do that we're not even touching on again just keeping this basic for somebody who's never used the software uh, later on if you guys request it, I can go through and show some more advanced uses of the software but for now, we're keeping it simple, we're keeping it quick, and I encourage you to go to Nick's website and download at least the trial of their software and check it out. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're not. It's really cool stuff. So until next time, you guys, uh, keep cool and keep the comments coming. I appreciate it. Thanks.